Hello and welcome to Gurok Farms. In today's video, we're gonna go through the, the milking systems here on my family's dairy farm and kind of show you the progression of uh, milking units as time has gone on. I grew up with surge, surge buckets. And I think a lot of you old timers are gonna know exactly what all this is. I'm not gonna have to tell you what this is about. When I was four or five years old, my parents had three and then we stepped up to four of them and they had to carry the milk. You know, this would, this machine would fit under the cow and then you would pour it into buckets and take it to the milk cows, put it in a strainer and strain down into the tank. And it had this uh, pneumatic pulsator on there. And right here, now this, this machine we used to milk our fresh cows with right now. This one's been changed around for some of the modern stuff. But right here, there was a pig sticking out where this attached and it would turn on and then your your airlines which are these for your pulsation would go in there so one for each you got four and that's what you call your inflation and those are the, the rubber parts get they get changed out every third or fourth month depending on how many milkings usually there's a chart on your packaging that you buy those with but anyway on and any system inflations always get changed out your rubber parts but these things are always kind of interesting it seemed like we were always there's there's rubber gasket stuff in here and i'm trying to remember back how these always went but they would they would click like that and it's all air ran no electricity it's just vacuum just vacuum you have one hose coming off now this is what they call double pulsation you got two hoses so this here small hose is your pulsation hose and then your main air hose and uh right now this is set up so that when she milks all her milk would go into this container and you would just have vacuum inside that and then you could take your lid off and uh, that'll hold probably i think maybe this one would be like a 60 pounder and they made smaller ones too for like the jerseys because she's lower to the ground and you, she didn't give as much milk maybe or something so why have such a big container and then you had this strap and now when i started milking here i didn't have buckets but i had a different system that was similar and you put that strap on on her back and i should probably show you with a cow but then you see all the adjustments in there depending on the size of the cow and it seems like the holes that you'd use all the time would wear right out this one here we took to some amish and you can't even buy these straps just anywhere anymore not everybody handles them but this part's a re you know you could replace this and after years and years and years of use they get bad but, so i had i think what did i have like 18 of these i picked up and everybody was getting away from the bucket so i was finding them everywhere so then you'd always have to put that on the cow first and you'd have them up ahead so when you get there with the bucket you had your strap and you could really clip along and then so when i came to this farm we had this machine and i've never seen this before i came here back in 91. this is what they call the breaker cup this is to me this is very close to the first surge pipeline milk machine made and i don't know what exactly their theory was but it's extremely heavy this is solid stainless steel block underneath here this here actually weighs more it weighs a little more than even this bucket when it's empty and you got this huge jar in here which is kind of a plus because there's vacuum inside there it's single pole station again but there's a, a vacuum inside you get this large amount of vacuum that's very close to the cow's teat in so the theory is when you're milking cows out you want your vacuum level to be very consistent and mine is set at exactly 14.3 and you may be 14.2 or 14.4 but that's it there's no more tolerance so there's a vacuum level controller in there in the system that keeps that exactly that. So the key is to keep at the cow's teat end exactly the same as um, the days and the months and the years go on. And your cows get consistent with that and they milk out very, you know, more evenly, get better results. Anyway, they were good for that, good for vacuum controls, but you had single pulsation, which means this would be considered the pulsator on top there. And this is your electrical device, so when you plug this into the stall cog, which you'd get vacuum on one side, and the other side would be your pulsation. So all four would pulse at the same time. The newer systems would be one side, then the other, and one side, then the other, and everything would be split up so that 
not the whole system is pulsing at one time and then that your vacuum levels doing this jumping around and then you got your milk hose so when you plug this into the line now you get your milk line so you got your vacuum line and your milk line so you had to plug in two you could probably use four hands when you start doing this but you got really good at it where i had six of these and it was at first it was actually quite economical so there was four here when i came one didn't work right for some reason and then i was able to find used parts because a lot of the guys got out of this they got into better stuff so there was a lot of used stuff around very cheap i could get this stuff fixed up really cheap and so i had six of them working like a clock then i was young and tough so i had what did i say 15 or 18 of those eventually i ended up picking up but it got to be quite laborsome and then it got to the point where there's different parts in here like a diaphragm there was things in here we couldn't get stuff that just wears out and i don't know if i can get that open to show what's in there probably can but i kept all six of them yet because i want to keep them for the sake of <laughs> you'll never see this just anywhere again there we go okay all stainless but this here part there's like a little rubber something inside there that would end up eventually getting a hole in it and then you wouldn't have right your pulsation wouldn't be right and it wasn't very expensive but they just quit making that stuff and it's like a lot of things so you get this one part you can't get anymore so here came 99 now back in the early 90s surge came out with one touch and i've heard some really good things about it there was a few farmers that had their money made and they they were updating in the one touch and boy did they like those and that would be this basically this device from here to here the dealer there was something to do with they were changing some of the components in the plastic or something for economical purposes and they 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 wanted some test barns to put them in first before they just released this whole thing so then we ended up getting a quite a deal on that and i i remember getting I don't know, it could have been a couple thousand dollars worth of value that I didn't have to buy just to be like the guinea pig for this system, which it turned out to be just fine. And they're still in there to this day. And we have not broken one piece off of any of this stuff yet. There's some different pieces in here you replace every so many years, but for the most part, these are tough. I never dreamed it'd be that tough. This was like back in 99, this unit right here, this just this black part was $800 and I had I had six total, but this was 800, but without the brain on it was 400, so it tells you. And, and if they did, I don't think they even make this anymore. I don't even know if I can get that new, but I don't even want to know what that costs today. But anyway, very good system. Double pulsation. Yeah, they, they were tough. Okay, so this brain on the top, this can be programmed even for like, like metric. This button over here will be your programming button and and this one over here is your like your reset so for instance so in our barn so there's one stall cock so there's one place to plug this in for every two cows so when the one cow gets done milking out there'll be a number up there so if she gave let's say 45 pounds this this isn't a hundred percent exact it might be off a pound or two but it, it, can, it can give you a real sense of what's going on under that cow it'll tell you the time she was milking so if i pre press this button It'll tell me the time and then just for a second and then it'll set back to zero and then you put it on your next cow. But anyway, you can set this so this got it's got flashers. You'll see little lights flickering when there's no milk flowing. So that's kind of representing your cow is done. You need to change it or you got something else going on. Or there can be beepers too, which they can get a little irritating when you got six of them going all at one time. But um, again, it just helps you be better at milking your cows because the theory is is get the milker under the cow Get her milked out as quick as possible with the least amount of irritation And when she's done being milked you get that unit off from out from under her You want to train your cows to allow to let down their milk because when their milk stops flowing It becomes extremely irritating for that milk machine to be tugging away when there's nothing flowing so um, you can train your cows to uh, to let their milk down fast or you can train them to hold their milk and what they'll do they'll just hold it longer and let's say you're not keeping up you got so many units and you're not that great on your feet and your your cows are getting what they call over milk and you're just basically wearing them out so there's little theories you can get and then you get better milk quality if you you do this right but this helps you so anyway they're they're pretty tough 
So on the other end, and again, now these, you can get a whole bunch of different brand names to hook into this. So you got your, your double pulsation and that's like I talked about with the other one so that you got two lines coming out of there. Goes in, into the top here, which is basically a T. So I believe this is, this is one side and then the other side. So when one side's pulsing, the other side's releasing and you get this effect like this. So um, to, make, to make it simple. And then there's a little, like right here, there's a little bleed hole there. Now that's in just a little bit of air and that air that goes in there helps pull the milk up the hose and pushes it into the milk line. And maybe sometime in the future, we'll go through the whole system in the barn and kind of give you a little more of an explanation of how the whole system works. But again, you look at the size of this jar under this one compared to this one. You got this huge chunk of vacuum in this one that one you maybe got maybe a quarter what's in this one. Here we maybe only have about maybe one tenth. That's why it's very critical to keep your vacuum level consistent. And then this one has got these uh, shutoff buttons. So if she would kick it off or something, or when you're taking it off, you'd pull that down, that would seal off. I don't know if you can see that in there. But it's just basically a simple switch to shut off the vacuum. So the vacuum level stops and you're not kind of pulling her whole teat half off trying to release the unit. And it just basically drops right off and you already have it in your hand. Or if she kicks it off, the button will automatically um, um, go into effect to shut the air off so it doesn't suck up any foreign matter like straw or, or you know, things like that when you got your vacuum still running. And then here for wash, they got this little tab on here. So then when you wash, you turn them like that. They're upside down like this, down in your vat. So they're down in your soap water. And you turn all your vacuum on and, and that'll kind of like like a dishwasher in a sense. You know, like when I came here too, you know, my dad, you know, he gets you milking cows. You can get your kids to milk cows for you. That was always a plus. But nobody's ever really trained us how to milk cows properly or by the book. I mean, you just imitated what your parents did. And uh, once I came here, I mean, we got on this route with the guy that was running the, the dealer that I was going to need to get parts through. Um, he kind of stopped and he said, uh, I want to I want to explain to you the proper way of milking cows. And I didn't I was young. I was only 24 years old. So I thought I'm going to listen. And he come up with these, you know, these things about not over milking them and the way you prep cows and the timing and all that. And we can get into some of that in the future, but I don't believe a lot of guys really understand how how is the proper way to milk a cow without, um, you know, ruining her or, um, you know, to keep her milk quality and her, her teat ends and everything healthy and good. I mean, that that's something I think uh, is lacking. So what they do, so what the, the, the machines do, you got automatic takeoffs and all these gadgets uh, like even this brain tells us stuff i mean it basically it just kind of tells you what you should already know and uh i think if you're trained right so the the guys will say the the best cow milkers there is is the ones that never milk cows for anybody ever before maybe some of these guys from other countries and they'll come here and they're good workers they want to learn and you can teach them the right way right off of how you feel your cow should get milked and then they don't have any what you call bad habits that they got kind of pounded in them as youngsters when they started milking for their parents or something so milking procedure is huge and i think it's way bigger of a of a thing than some of us realize to get quality milk all right, so that was it for the video. I hope you guys learned something. I know that I for sure learned something. The only uh, milking system I've really used is our uh, our newest one. Those of you that have milked before, especially you older guys, let us know what kind of milking system you had. We'd be interested to hear about it. Uh, leave a comment down below. But anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos and we'll see you next time.